I've obviously had a very steep learning curve since taking up the post of Chair of the Climate Change Transformation Board under this new Elf Cannon government. And I suppose 10 years ago, I recycled a bit of paper and glass bottles and thought that was enough and I was doing my bit. And now I am very much aware that there is a climate crisis. That's what led me to putting down the motion for Timwald. And it's not only climate, but an, an environmental crisis as well. And I think the fact of having the biosphere whole nation status for the Isle of Man is something very precious. And we should strive ever more to, to be more sustainable in everything we do, whether that's in our own properties or on an island basis. And for me, the point about renewable energy is um, why wouldn't we want renewable energy for the island instead of being reliant on gas or oil with all the volatility in the price in the market at the moment. The key point of COP26 for me and uh, ministers from Jersey and Guernsey was meeting with the Energy Minister Greg Hans from Bay's department in the UK government where it was confirmed and announced after that that the UK government had agreed to extend the Paris Agreement to the Crown Dependencies. And what that does is, is give the Isle of Man publicly and on a world stage the um, commitment that we're making to reduce our emissions. So I suppose in terms of the future of the island, just consider if we didn't do this, if we thought we're all right, Jack, we're not hurting anything, we can carry on with our gas power station and we'll spend the hundreds of millions needed to recommission that instead of investing in renewables. But actually, from a business perspective, that isn't acceptable. And I'm already hearing companies who take their ESG commitments, that's their environmental sustainable governance commitments, very seriously. And if the Isle of Man continues not to invest in renewable energy and greener, cleaner technology, then we're not going to attract those businesses to the Isle of Man. And internationally, our reputation would suffer. And if you compare it with the financial world, we would never not comply with financial directives to uphold and, and upkeep the high standards of reputation that we have in finance or e-gaming. And it's the same, I think, coming in, in terms of environmental commitments. I think that definitely I sense from the younger members of our community um, quite a lot of frustration at the slow pace that we have been going on the journey and quite a lot of cynicism um, from some quarters and it's a massive culture shift. I'm, I'm not under any illusion how difficult this is going to be and I feel that we do need to get everybody to come along with us and part of the Climate Change Act that was given Royal Assent just before Christmas, that puts a duty on us to ensure that it is a just transition. So that means it's fair to everybody and there will have to be support for those people who can least afford to come on this journey. We've got the potential. There is a, a, an area off this coast, uh, just off Mackled, which is currently under discussion um, with a company looking at whether to put a significant wind farm there are also other options. We've talked to various businesses and individuals who've got propositions for some onshore generation, whether that's a combination of wind, solar, um, and even, hopefully, I'd like to see tidal. But we've got to do what's right for the right now, and as well as looking long-term at the solutions for the future. And the Isle of Man has amazing resources, amongst waters with potential for blue carbon and storage of carbon, or potentially for, for new crops or even biofuels such as seaweed. Change tomorrow, today.